Good afternoon, ladies, and uh, say good afternoon to any gentlemen who are watching on Channel 84. My name is Cheryl Rosenzone. I'm the dietitian here at Eden Walls. Uh, today I would like to uh, give you a lecture in honor of National Nutrition Month, March is National Nutrition Month, and it's titled Personalize Your Plate. Uh, for the past year, most of your meals have been delivered to your apartments. Your decision about what entree to order for dinner has been informed by the nutritional analysis provided for each dinner entree. But now that you are returning to restaurant dining, both at Eatonwald and out in the community, how do you make healthy menu choices if the nutritional analysis is not provided? Many restaurants, bakeries, coffee shops, and quick service vendors are required to provide nutrition information about their foods and beverages right on the menu. The number of calories for foods that are regularly offered should be listed next to the items on menus, on order boards, or next to the food being served on buffet lines. The information posted on the menu is usually limited to calories, but sometimes a restaurant may list other ingredients to show that the food is low in fat or high in protein. Additional information must also be available on request for food served at these restaurants. This includes information about the quantity of nutrients, such as sodium, saturated fat, and dietary fiber. If you like to plan ahead, many restaurants also have nutrition information available online, which can help you select healthier options before you arrive and reduce the pressure you may feel to order quickly. Restaurants are not required to have nutrition information available if they have fewer than 20 locations. If nutrition information isn't available, here are some tips for when you're deciding what to order. Limit foods that are fried or served in sauces that are high in calories and saturated fat. Have sauces served on the side and dip your food into the sauce. This can cut way down on the sodium content in Chinese foods. And if you have the white sauce or the brown sauce served on the side and you dip into it, rather than having the meal drenched in sauce and sodium. There are certain terms which are used to describe foods to make the consumer feel that they are getting something better. But these terms are really describing foods that are higher in fat and calories. Avoid foods that are listed as Deluxe, supreme, supersized. If you eat too many foods that are supersized, you may become supersized yourself. Avoid foods that are described as rich, creamy, crunchy, crispy, battered and breaded, cheesy and Alfredo. All of the good things. Choose more foods that have healthy descriptions, such as baked, grilled, roasted, steamed, al fresco, and with marinara sauce. Now that you no longer have a menu packet delivered to your door, it's important to plan your meals. How many meals you will be eating each day, and where you will obtain the food. Eating at restaurants in Edenwald or out in the community is not the only option for staying well nourished. Edenwald provides transportation to Wegmans and other grocery stores as well as Super Walmart and Trader Joe's. Store-bought meals, and frozen ones in particular, definitely have a bad rap, which makes sense considering their less than healthy TV dinner origins. But they've come a long way since the 1950s, and nowadays you can find delicious pre-made meals that also happen to be high in protein, packed with veggies, and low in added sugar and sodium. Trader Joe's is one store that excels in the pre-made food department. Here are some top picks of pre-made and frozen meals in Trader Joe's fridge and freezer section that registered dietitians recommend. So I'm going to describe a few meals to you that you can buy at Trader Joe's in case there's ever a day where you just don't feel like coming down to one of the restaurants, you just don't feel like getting dressed, you know, you maybe you want to stay in your pajamas that day. Um, but you should know that I don't work for Trader Joe's, I'm not getting any commission, so 
I'm just um, describing some of the meals to you because these are very popular with dietitians. The first one is a vegan meal. It's yellow jackfruit curry with jasmine rice. Jackfruit is a meat substitute. It's a vegan meal packed with eggplant, bell pepper, and lots of spicy flavor. Now you don't have to write any of these down because I actually have a list of these meals that I'm going to be describing to you and I can give these handouts to you at the end of the lecture. The jackfruit curry with jasmine rice contains 470 calories, 18 grams of fat, no grams of cholesterol because vegan meals usually don't have cholesterol, 580 milligrams of sodium, 70 grams of carbohydrate, 3 grams of fiber, and 8 grams of protein. Does anyone know how many milligrams of sodium you should be consuming in a day? The average healthy adult. How much sodium they should consume in a day? No? 2,300 milligrams, which is basically what's contained in one teaspoon. But that doesn't mean you should be adding a teaspoon to your food because a lot of the foods we eat already contain sodium in them. Now, if you have hypertension, if you have congestive heart failure, if you're on certain medications, 2,300 may be too much for you, but that's for the average healthy adult. So that the meal that I just described, the yellow jackfruit curry, which has 580 milligrams of sodium, that's 25% of the daily allotment for sodium in a day in that meal, which is not bad. The next one is a meat meal. It's the chicken burrito bowl, made with chicken, ground rice, black beans, quinoa, and some chipotle seasoning. One bowl contains 370 calories, 10 grams of fat, 55 milligrams of cholesterol, 630 milligrams of sodium, 51 milligrams of carbohydrate, 9 grams of fat, and 22 grams of protein. The next meal is a vegan meal. It's the lentil soup with ancient grains. It's made with lentils, carrots, quinoa, and flax seeds. One cup contains 200 calories, 9 grams of fat, 0 milligrams of cholesterol, 470 milligrams of sodium, 24 milligrams of carbohydrate, 8 grams of fiber, and 9 grams of protein. Another vegan soup is the organic hearty minestrone soup. This soup is full of beans and veggies. One cup contains 110 calories, 2.5 grams of fat, 0 milligrams of cholesterol, 480 milligrams of sodium, 17 grams of carbohydrate, 4 grams of fiber, and 5 grams of protein. And there are two more meals that I'm going to describe to you. The ricotta and spinach tortellini with red pesto. This is a good frozen entree for pasta lovers with protein-rich ingredients like ricotta cheese and nutty pesto. One package contains 460 calories, 24 grams of fat, only 5 grams are from saturated fat, 40 milligrams of cholesterol, 700 milligrams of sodium, 46 grams of carbohydrate, 5 grams of fiber, and 14 grams of protein. This meal is a little high in sodium. It will keep you satiated for a long time because it's also high in fat. And finally, a salad meal. The salad palate turkey harvest. This is like a healthier taste of Thanksgiving any time of the year. It's filled with roasted sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, spinach, kale, turkey, and more. I don't have the nutritional breakdown for this salad. Wegmans also has a prepared meal section. You can stock up on pre-made dinners while you do your grocery shopping. Now I'm highlighting Trader Joe's and Wegmans because they have pre-made meal options and Eden Wall provides transportation to these markets. If you regularly shop at other markets, check out their pre-made meal options. Wegmans has a two-pound rotisserie chicken that comes in three different styles, plain, lemon pepper, and barbecue. For only $5.99, these chickens will provide you with several high-protein meals if it's just one person eating. If you have leftover rotisserie chicken, you can slice it up and serve it on a bed of lettuce or with prepared salad. Add some whole grain bread or a muffin for a complete meal. Protein is sometimes an overlooked nutrient with older adults. 
The average older adult needs 1.0 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of protein per day. For a woman weighing 120 pounds, that translates into 55 to 65 grams of protein per day. For a man weighing 175 pounds, that translates into 80 to 95 grams of protein per day. A three ounce serving of rotisserie chicken will provide you with 20 grams of protein. For a woman, that means about a third of your daily protein requirement. And for a man, that provides you with a quarter of your daily protein requirement. Just for a frame of reference, one egg contains seven grams of protein. So rotisserie chicken provides about the same amount of protein, ounce for ounce, as an egg, but you're more likely to eat a larger serving of chicken. Older adults require more dietary protein than younger adults. Inadequate protein intake contributes to increased skin fragility, skin tears, decreased immune function, poorer healing, falls, and longer recuperation time from illness. So the takeaway is eat your chicken, eggs, milk, or any foods high in protein. Back to the rotisserie chicken. A three ounce serving of Wegmans plain rotisserie chicken provides 140 calories, seven grams of fat, 75 milligrams of cholesterol, 320 milligrams of sodium, zero grams of carbohydrate, zero grams of fiber, and 20 grams of protein. Other prepared food entrees available at Wegmans include boneless chicken breasts in many varieties, meatloaf, quiche, pulled pork, Italian dishes like meatballs and sauce, pasta bowl rigatoni bolognese, macaroni and cheese, and more. I'd like to speak now a little bit about safe storage of leftovers. When bringing prepared foods home to be used for more than one meal, it's important to know how to safely store the leftovers for future meals. Refrigeration at 40 degrees or below slows the growth of mold and bacteria, but it does not stop it. Cooked meat or poultry, cooked fish or shellfish, or even pizza can be stored in the refrigerator for no more than three or four days. The same holds true for soups or stews with vegetables or meat added. Soups and stews can be stored in the freezer for two to three months. Cooked meat or poultry can be stored in the freezer for two to six months. And cooked fish or shellfish can be stored in the freezer for four to six months. An unopened package of lunch meat or deli slices will keep in your refrigerator for two weeks before it's opened but only three to five days once it's been opened. And I have a perishable food storage guide here that you can get after the lecture. This is a handy guide to keep on your refrigerator so you know how long you can safely store some of your foods. I'd like to speak a little bit now about the importance of breakfast. Some people don't eat three meals per day. The meal most often skipped is breakfast. There's an old saying, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and eat dinner like a, have you heard this before? Dinner like a pauper, which is kind of the, the opposite of what we do, what we Americans do. We usually have dinner as our largest meal. But you should make breakfast your largest meal of the day. The basic formula for breakfast would be to pair carbohydrates with protein. The carbohydrates give your body energy to get started and your brain the fuel it needs to start the day and take on the day. Protein gives you staying power and it helps you feel full until the next meal. You can eat whole grain cereals or bread, fresh fruit or veggies for carbs, and you can eat yogurt, cottage cheese, eggs, nuts or legumes, and you can drink low fat milk for protein. And also, yogurt and milk also contain some carbohydrate. Twice as many Americans aren't eating breakfast now compared with 40 years ago. Eating breakfast help, helps keep your blood sugar steadier throughout the day, whether you have diabetes or not. For people with normal glucose test results, this might help you avoid insulin resistance, which can lead to type 2 diabetes. 
Drops and spikes in your blood sugar can also affect your mood, making you more nervous, grumpy, or angry. If you have diabetes, you should never skip breakfast. When people with diabetes miss their morning meal, they're more likely to develop hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. The American Diabetes Association recommends including lots of fiber in your breakfast, about seven to 10 grams, and limit yourself to 400 to 500 calories. People with diabetes should check their blood sugar to see the effects of their breakfast choices. For example, while some people do fine with oatmeal, it may cause blood sugar spikes for others. Recent studies also show a link between breakfast and heart health. In 2017, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology reported that people who skip breakfast are more likely to have atherosclerosis, have bigger waistlines, are more likely to weigh more, have higher blood pressure, and higher cholesterol levels. For seniors who are not eating enough and are losing weight, skipping breakfast can contribute to continuing weight loss. For people who can't eat large meals, Skipping breakfast decreases the total number of nutrients you will take in over the course of the day. It decreases your intake of calories, protein, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. I'd like to give you some breakfast ideas now. The first one would be avocado toast. Whole grain toast topped with slices of avocado, tomato slices, and if you want, bacon or beans. Next would be yogurt, fruit, and granola. And Greek yogurt is the highest in protein. Next would be eggs. For a quick ready-to-eat breakfast, you should keep hard-boiled eggs in your refrigerator. You can also have a soft-boiled egg, scrambled eggs, or an omelet with veggies. And I have a handout here that you can pick up at the end of this lecture on how to prepare scrambled eggs in a mug in your microwave. And then you don't have to wash them just pop the mug in the dishwasher. Another good breakfast choice would be oatmeal or porridge. Oats are a good source of carbohydrates and fiber, healthy fats, proteins, and lots of important vitamins. Studies have shown that oats can help manage cholesterol levels, improve blood sugar control, and help with weight management. And you've probably seen some of the Cheerio commercials where they capitalize on the, the effect that oats can have on heart health. You can use instant oatmeal packets and you can make them more nutritious by adding fresh berries, apples, or nut butter. And another option for breakfast would be smoothies. You can prepare smoothies in your blender at home using many different ingredients, such as regular milk, soy milk, almond milk, yogurt, frozen bananas, frozen strawberries, nut butter, pomegranate juice, and even green vegetables like kale. Or you can purchase bottled smoothies, such as the ones sold at Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has a banana almond butter protein smoothie. They have a vanilla almond spice chai smoothie and a strawberry chai smoothie. To make breakfast preparation easier, get into a routine. Write down a menu, and just like when you filled out your menu packet for the week ahead during the pandemic, you will know what you are having for breakfast the next day. If you are planning on having eggs for breakfast, you probably won't want to have an egg salad sandwich for lunch and quiche for dinner. Planning ahead will allow you to have well-balanced days, incorporating all of the food groups. And on a final note for breakfast, start the day with proper hydration. In addition to a nourishing meal, start the day with a big glass of water. Lunch is also an important meal of the day. A salad with some protein source is an easy and nutritious meal. And don't just stick with lettuce and tomato salad. Add a variety of fruits and vegetables and other toppings to your salad for added color, crunch, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Start with a base of lettuce, spring mix, or baby spinach. Add shredded cabbage and carrots, tri-colored peppers, spring onions, cooked peas, beets, beans, roasted potatoes, sweet potatoes, or butternut squash, 
berries, sunflower seeds, slivered almonds, raisins, and dried cranberries, just to remember, mention a few options. Sandwiches and wraps are also easy to put together with no dishes to wash, and they offer endless options. Use up your leftover salad, cooked veggies, meats, and fish by rolling them into a wrap with a little dressing. Or make a traditional tuna salad, egg salad, or chicken salad wrap. For a really easy lunch, you could try what I call the potassium powerhouse, a peanut butter and sliced banana sandwich with a glass of low-fat milk. I recommend using whole grain bread and a, nat a natural peanut butter without added sugars, salt, or hydrogenated oils. If you are not a lunch eater, you can still meet your nutritional requirement with small nutritious snacks in the afternoon. Some of my snack suggestions would include baby carrots and pepper slices dipped in hummus, whole grain crackers with nut butter, apple slices with peanut butter, Greek yogurt, a hard-boiled egg, and dried fruit and nuts. Dinner options were mentioned earlier in this lecture, including prepared foods from local grocery stores or restaurant meals. I encourage everyone to include fish in some of their dinner meals. The American Heart Association urges people to choose fatty fish highest in omega-3s for two servings a week. Its list includes salmon, mackerel, herring, lake trout, sardines, and albacore tuna. The cafe at Edenwald is now open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with 50% seating capacity. You must have a res reservation right now. Also, uh, Mark Banks sent out an email, for those of you that get email, describing what's going to be happening starting next week because this is the last week that we have um, dinner delivery to everyone's apartment. You can still get dinner delivered if you order room service, but everyone won't be receiving it like we were during the parts of the pandemic where we had to really stay in our apartments before we all got vaccinated. So if you don't have email, Megan also puts copies of this in everyone's copy. But I'll just read some of the highlights. The Valley Room is now the buffet service restaurant. The Grill is now the full table service restaurant. We did not change the location of the Valley Room and the Grill, as you know them, just the level of service that's provided in each area. We will open the Valley Room Buffet on Monday, March 22nd. We will end the routine pandemic apartment meal delivery service also on March 22nd. And the cafe, as I mentioned, is open seven days a week for three meals a day. And you should have a reservation at any of these restaurants, also for it if you're picking up carryout. We will open the grill, full table service, and the pub the first week of April. And then we will still have available the grocery list. And this is what it looks like. Uh, we have these right outside the cafe, on the, on the counter outside the cafe, and you can still place a grocery order list. The grocery list options include produce, fruits and vegetables, breads, deli meat, milk, cheese, eggs, yogurt, cookies, and ice cream. So that concludes my formal part of the presentation. Does anyone have any questions? I don't yes. hear about dessert. I don't hear about desserts. Uh, diet desserts as opposed to regular desserts. Are diet desserts a lot less in calories? Yeah, yeah, well, the, the regular desserts are made with sugar which is 15 calories per teaspoon. The diet desserts are made with sucralose, which is, which is two calories per teaspoon. So the te depending on how many teaspoons are included in that meal, there's definitely fewer calories in the diet desserts. Um, the only exception would be if something is like caramelized on the top, if we actually have to put it under the heat to caramelize it, uh, then we, you can't really caramelize the sucralose. So that's gonna have some sugar added to it. So that's where you will have fewer calories if you choose one of the diet desserts because of the artificial sweetener. Any other questions? Uh, aren't you kind of uh, fooling yourself, uh, ourselves, when we say that something is a diet dessert? 
So diet deserved us, we have a, a, it's not a real definition. I mean, if you looked in the, yeah. in the dictionary, you see basically anything that's lower in calories than the original version, people can call it a diet. And it depends upon what kind of diet are you on. If you're a diabetic, then it's preferable not to be consuming a lot of sugar, but you may still want to have something other than fruit for dessert. So in that case, the, the, the artificially sweetened dessert that has a sucralose is a better choice for a diabetic. If you're trying to lose weight, uh, that's another question. Um, you may still want to have a few desserts during the week, so then the diet dessert would still um, be more friendly to your weight loss plan. But it's not, um, I mean, there's so many terms, in a future lecture I can go over what do these terms mean? Low calorie, reduced calorie, low sugar, reduced sugar. Diet is just sort of like an all over term. Well, it certainly is nice where they have the, um, yeah, there's so many protein and so many carbs. Right, for dinner, the, the nutrients. It really, uh, really helps people put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. I agree. Any other questions? Thank you all for coming. Feel free to, uh, to pick up any of these.